Hello. I'm making this second video again to honor God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to share with you guys my experience of hell. And um, before I go on with the vision, I just want to explain to you what happened prior to this experience. The Lord, I mean, I had the habit of doing a water only fast once a week and it, it would happen to be on a Friday. And, um, and I remember that first day when I, I wanted to break my fast, the Lord, I felt in my spirit where the Lord was, um, I felt in my spirit that the Lord was telling me to know, don't break it yet. Go on. Like, just keep on going. So I went Saturday, I did again water fast. And when I wanted to break it at night, the Lord said again, nope, not time. Keep on going. And on Sunday, same thing. So again, I was doing the water fast. And I remember Sunday, I got, I was really tired because I used to serve at the church I attended. And I was so tired because I was fasting. And I remember Sunday night, I wanted to eat. The Lord said, nope, keep on going. And then I got mad. I got upset and I started telling God, well, this, I didn't choose this. I didn't ask for this. I'm not ready for this. That, you know, I really talked to the most high Almighty God this way, believe me. And um, and that night, one thing I want to mention is that I didn't break my fast because, I mean, I knew God told me to go on an extra day. But I literally slept in that mode, like in that rebellious mode attitude. And I remember I woke up to this sound, this sound of all I can describe it as is a sound of boiling soup. It's hard for me to give an example to someone, let's say, who's here, um, who's in the U.S. Um, the closest thing I could think of is if you're cooking a creamy, a creamy type of soup, thick. And then, you know, as it's cooking and it's boiling, you can hear the sound of it's boiling. So that's what I heard, like something thick, boiling, like duh, duh, duh. and I was like, "Whoa, like, like what is that?" And my, um, just to tell you guys, when I was having this vision, it was so real that I literally thought I had woken up at that time. I, it, it looked, it felt like it, it felt as if. I went to sleep, I'd gone to sleep, and then maybe somebody walked past and made some noise, and then I woke up. So I'm waking up to this noise, and I opened my eyes, and I was in my bed, of course. I opened my eyes, and I see lava all around in my room, red lava, magma, what you see when the volcano erupts, and I'm like, what's going on and then in front of me i see three demonic creatures they were tall very tall and black and i also see this four like this ex this other creature which that's that's short in height like like a midget and i remember i've seen this um demon oh this creature whatever it is i've seen it many times in my revelation i'm not sure if it's the representation of the devil or not but i've seen it many many times in different dreams but yeah so i see this and i'm all puzzled and i'm like what's going on like i literally was like what's going on what is this because i thought i was awake i mean the lord made it in a way that i thought that's what i was experiencing at the moment and this Demon went in front of me, are looking at each other and they are just laughing. I mean, they're looking at each other and they're laughing. They're laughing. You know, when maybe in movies or even in real life, when bully laugh at the people that they're 
taunting. You know, it was like that when it's like every like when the bully thinks something is funny and you, the victim, you don't think it's so funny and you're puzzled. So that's the state I was in. They were laughing. They were looking at me, looking at each other and just laughing. And I was like, what's going on? Like, what is this? And I remember all of a sudden, one of the demons, the one that was right across from me, he grabbed my leg, he grabbed it and threw it in the fire. That was like in the floor. I couldn't see the floor of my room. Like all my room except for my bed was lava. He grabbed it. I looked at my leg. He, he like, he literally cut my leg and put it in the fire. And when he did that, I looked at my leg and I remember what I could like I can how I can explain it is you know when you're eating chicken and let's say you pull the leg out of the rest of the body and you see how it's not really neat that's how my foot look like not my foot of course this area that um, the area that separates the leg from the upper part of the body I it was just surreal and then after some time my leg grew back and I was like what's going on in my head I was just speechless I was just looking and then that major demons demon just walked just walked toward me and he was just and he was just talking slowly, you know, like again in the movie when a bad guy is about to do something really bad and he's talking smart, like, like, oh, he, like talking softly, like I'm going to take my time. So he was just coming toward me and I was just there like helpless. I, I was so confused that I couldn't even think or anything. I was just so confused. And he was coming closer to me, closer to my face, as if he was trying to, like, I knew he was coming to my face to rip my face off, like, to just mess me up. And at that time, at that moment, it's like I, I saw, like, a, a flashlight, just flashlight, and I woke up. And mind you, I woke up exactly in the position I was in. As I was having that vision, so I literally woke up exactly how I was laying in my bed when I had woken up um, before the vision, I mean, when the vision started. And I was like, oh my goodness. Now, I thank God that he did not let me experience the pain and the torment. He just gave me a vision, like a, a what, like he just gave me a visual experience. I did not experience any pain or anything like that. But I woke up, I was like, I was just, I, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I didn't even know how to pray. And mind you, at that time, I didn't know that I had sinned. Because I felt, well, I didn't, I didn't eat. I mean, I didn't disobey God. Like he told me to go another day. I didn't, I didn't disobey that. But I didn't even realize that just rebellion, like just having that rebellious spirit and pride. And I mean, who am I to tell my creator and redeemer, the one who paid for my sins with his body, the almighty God who took flesh and paid for my sin with his own flesh and blood. What am I to tell him that something is too much, especially in that way? I mean, I know God loves humble. He loves when someone is humble. So I'm just saying like the way I spoke, I didn't realize it was that bad. And this dream really, it really woke me up because I was like, wow, wow. What is at stake is terrible. I mean, and um, I just want to, I just want to tell someone out there, especially, especially Christian, people that have known Jesus, people that have experienced moments of like special moment with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. I just want to like tell you, please, 
Be careful with the God you are dealing with. This is not only a God that, I mean, God is good, yes, and his mercies are immeasurable. His love is immeasurable, but God is also God that will not tolerate sin. He will not tolerate pride. He will not tolerate anyone that comes to him thinking that, like not honoring him for who he is. And especially for a Christian who knows what God did to have him within, he will be very tough on, on us, especially us Christians. So I just want to encourage anyone out there, whether you, I mean, if you're not a Christian, please take a time to just, just think about your life. Just think about your life. Think about, just sit down and think about your life and say, okay, if I die like this, what will I show to my creator? And this also goes to even to, to a Christian. If I die like this, after what the Lord has done for me, after what I've seen the Lord do for me, are there areas in my life where I know I don't want to face God? Are there areas in my life, are there sins, are there weaknesses that I know I will have no, no excuses in front of God? And moreover, even if you feel like, well, I'm doing good, I just want to encourage someone don't be too comfortable. Ask God. Because like in my case, the bad thing was that not only I had sinned, but I didn't even know I had sinned. I was not even aware I had sinned. I was not even, I didn't even measure my sin. And what would have happened to me if the Lord had decided to take my life that day? What would have happened to me when people would think that, oh no, this girl, she was a child of God, she served, she was this, she was that. And then I find myself in hell, knowing that I sin against God. So I just want to tell anyone, please, don't be too comfortable with God. Truly, yes, God is good and God is love, but God is holy. And nothing that is filthy will come near his presence. God is holy. Ask him in a humbly, in a humbly, like in a humble way. Ask him humbly to search your heart, to open your eyes. If there's any areas that you need to work on, ask him to show you. And he, I know he is faithful. He's faithful and he loves us. He loves us so even more than we love ourselves. He loves us so much that he's willing to do all that he can to help us escape, escape hell. But don't just brush it off. Don't just say, oh, well, I would die and then God would judge me. What is hell or heaven? No. On this earth, people will not commit silly things because they don't want to go to prisons. And even the one who go to prison, sometimes when they get to prison, especially when it comes to long-term prisons, like 50 years, um, life sentences, and death penalty, people are careful. People are careful not to go to prison because they know that would just be a waste that they will just stay somewhere and just waste their life, waste, waste their existence. How much more of hell, how much more of a place of torment, a place of constant torment, a place of regret, an eternal condition. Please don't take it lightly and really seek God for his mercy and for his help. So again, my main, um, my main message was like, hell is real for anyone. 
anyone can find himself in hell. Anyone who does not follow Christ wholeheartedly and in, in a way that is worthy. Like, you can't just follow Christ as you want, as you feel like it. You have to follow Christ the way he deserves it. He needs to have the first place. Yes, yeah, so if you are one of the people that are sold out to Christ, I am convinced that you have you have escaped hell, quote unquote. Because I mean, I don't believe there's any escape until that day where the Lord either welcome you or tells you to depart. But what I'm saying is like hell is real for anyone. Don't take it lightly when God says go through the narrow way because like pray make sure you go through the narrow way even though it's difficult don't take it lightly because you don't want to end up somewhere for eternity full of regrets just because you were careless just because you were proud just because just because just because Hell is real. Hell is bad. But I pray that we will escape in the unfailing by the unfailing grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shalom.